of Integrative Medicine at Trinity Health of New England, I would like to welcome you to this week's installment of Wellness Wednesday. Wellness Wednesday is designed to bring you, in brief format, tools for wellness that will benefit you, our colleagues, and the community at large. I'm Dr. Kathy Muller, and I'm here with Tim Michaels once again today, and today we are talking about a different kind of pressure point, facial pressure point. So, Kathy, I think this is um, just makes so much sense. We had spent a little time last week talking about pressure points on our hands and in our wrist area. So I'm really curious to see um, what the facial pressure points are and how we can use them throughout our day. Yeah, they're interesting, and it's really simple. And as we talked about before, acupuncture points are usually found sort of in little divots. They're sort of um, depressions in our bodies, in between bones or in between muscles. So they're relatively easy to find. You can't hurt yourself with them. Um, and you can use just your fingers to stimulate the points just for a few seconds, and it can provide really nice relief. And so we have uh, three different points that I'm going to show you. And I'm going to share my screen so that we can show the audience um, what they look like and how they might use them. OK, there we go. And so the first point that we're talking about is called young body. And yang bai, also in an acupuncture point, is called uh, gallbladder 14, and it's located just above your eyebrows. So it's about one centimeter above your eyebrows. And if you kind of, it's right where the pupil is, and so if you go right up there, there is a little bit of a divot that you can feel. And you can do it just like you do on both sides. And this is a really good one, and you can, sometimes they're a little bit tender, and you can use this for headache. You can massage them if your eyes are blurry. You can use them for pain, um, dizziness. And it's a really good one at about, it's, we're recording at 4 o'clock. It's about a good one for this time of day when you hit your screen time max. So it's a really good one. All right. Our next one is called Kwan Tzu. Oh, and I missed one slide, so we'll go back. Um, and Kwanzu is also called urinary bladder too. And these are weird names, I know, like what does the bladder have to do with the face? But that's the name of the meridian that goes through this point. It doesn't make Western anatomical sense, but it makes tons of sense in Chinese medicine. And then Kwanzu is actually on the part of your eyebrow right by your nose. And these are almost always tender for me. It's just in that depression point. And this is a good one for eye pain, for hiccups, and for headache. So again, really easily easy. You just put your two fingers there and kind of press on that press on that little divot there. Hmm. And then I'm going to back up because I missed Yin Tong, which is one of my favorites. Yin Tong was um, when I when I did a lot of acupuncture. People, some people would come in and be nervous, and so I put Yin Tong in first, and they can't see it but it's incredibly relaxing. So this is a really good one for stress, right in between the eyes, right in the middle between your eyebrows. And again, there's a little bit of a divot there. And mm. it's also a good one for headache. It's good for insomnia. It's good for runny nose. And I don't know a ton about acupuncture for animals, but this is the one that they use first for dogs and cats to kind of settle them down before they do the rest of the acupuncture. It's pretty astonishing to watch how the animals just sort of settle down when they put um, the needle right there. But you can just use your finger, just stimulate the one right there. Interesting. I think the one for the hiccups is the one I'm most fascinated by. I hate the hiccups. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting. Acupuncture works really, really nicely for hiccups. And there's not a whole lot that does. Hmm. Yeah. So, so some good tools. Um, can you go back to the first one, though? Uh, yep. You refer to it as like you reach your uh, the time of the day where you've had enough with the screens, right? This one. Yep. So I'm hoping a lot of our folks who work from home, not only that, not only work from home, but everybody who's in a position where your life seems to be one WebEx meeting after another, um, <laughs> that this might be a really good one um, to really kind of practice with. I'm noticing on the face, Kathy, it's a little bit harder to find the divots. 
Yeah, it, they're a lot more shallow, right? At least you hope you don't have big, huge divots in your forehead. But some people do, some people don't. They're a little ch more challenging, but that's why it's interesting that they're often tender, you know? Not painful, like it shouldn't hurt, but you can you can tell if you're doing young by, you can go like right here, and if you move just a millimeter or two over, it just feels different. It's, it's just a little bit more tender, it's a, and you can, you got to play with them, but you, but you'll be able to find them. You'll be able to find them. And a lot of times when we're we're finding points with acupuncture on patients, I'll use my thumb first to find them, and the patient will be like, oh oh yeah, there you go, that's the spot. It's interesting. So we have two spots above our eyebrow in line with yep. our pupil, yep. two spots right at the end of our eyebrow, and then one spot directly in between them. Right in the middle. Okay. And the reason why there's two is there's there are pairs, and so there's there are pairs of meridia on both sides, and then we have a meridian that goes right down the middle, both in the back and in the front. So that's why there's only one yin tongue, and there's two of the other ones. Okay, this has been fascinating. Thank you so well, much. I'm glad. My pleasure. We'll see you next week. <laughs>